Today I am going to show you how to take information from a nine card Linderman spread and turn this information into a wonderful piece of spirit. I am so excited to show you how to take all this information and to turn it into spirit art. Okay, first of all, I want to let you know what cards that I am using. So I'm using Under the Roses and they're very petite Linderman cards. So I absolutely love the, the color of them and just the pictures of them and it, you know, absolutely a beautiful deck. So if you fall in love with them, you'll know the name of the deck. Now I'm going to show you how to do what's considered a box spread. It has nine cards and each in each, there's three cards in each row. Now, whenever I look at the cards and I tell you, okay, A, B, and C will be the card spread. A is the dog, so that's where we start, okay? A is the dog, B is the tree, C is the clover. And so we go in that direction so that you know what cards I am talking about. So let's go ahead and start getting this information. Now it's very important to get information about a person's past because this is where they learn, this is where they get memories, this is where they, oh my gosh, had tribulations. You learn so much about a person when you get some information about their past because this kind of shows you where they're going to go next. So whenever you're looking at a past on this nine spread, we start with the dog, then we go down to the tower, and then we go down to the rider. And I'm gonna give you some information about what this could mean whenever you're looking at the spread. And again, it just really depends on the person that you're reading for and what each symbol means and what each story is. So when you look at the past in this person, it looks like that they're hoping to be appreciated and anything that they do and but they weren't really necessarily being able to find it so they might have been disappointed in you know doing something very special and wanted to be recognized for it and did not get recognized so they feel very underappreciated so then what they have done though the tower and the rider is they've isolated themselves a little bit because they're they have a difficult time dealing with bad news so it's much easier to just lock yourself away in a tower and um, isolate yourself okay so now let's look at this person's present to see where this information where this card spread is showing so the present is b e and h and so we have the tree, the anchor, and the ship. And so they may be feeling, you know, some type of safe instability uh, because a tree, you know, has tree roots, you know, and it keeps them in the ground so it's very stable. And the anchor is the same thing, so they're very, feeling very safe and stable. But, you know, they want to explore. They want to make changes in their life is how they're feeling presently. So for this person, we have the future. We have the clover, the moon, and the house. And so they are very untroubled by fears or needs in the future once they start working on everything. They've kind of gotten to that point. And they, they find comfort in their home. This is where they feel like themselves. They can take off, you know, all the different masks that they wear out in the world. They come home for safety. Now let's look at the concern that this person may have that's going on in their life, okay? And it's why in the, something that kind of comes up on occasion. So we have the dog, the tree, and the clover. And these are all very positive cards. However, this person is just kind of concerned about them, okay? So they're concerned about having maybe loyalty in their family. Maybe there's a family member that does not feel, is not very trustworthy. And, and again, maybe they're looking at um, not feeling secure, maybe not feeling very grounded, kind of fearful at times. So it may be because of this family situation. 
So let's look at the situation. What is this person dealing with at the moment in current events? Okay, so let's look at the situation it needs. So we have the tower, we have the anchor, and we have the moon. And this may mean that this person, again, whatever is going on has a strong defense, okay? And isolates themselves whenever things are gonna get a little rocky in that moon. That's a very emotional <laughs> time. So this person is very emotional. And so this loneliness may become normal in the situation that this person is in. The undercurrent which is on the very bottom and always like kind of it's on the very baseline of all the cards of what is accepted, what is known or what is under control by the sitter. Okay. So again, again, we have the rider, the ship and the house. And so they feel they have an awareness that they do want to make changes in their life. Okay. Something needs to change and they may want to start new traditions, making new discoveries in their life. So this person is very aware of these things. Now the X it has indirect influences, okay? They are red as a theme, conclusion, and the general vibration of the cards. Uh, and you can always tell when it's a you know very positive reading or a very negative reading depending on the cards. So we have, we go across, we have the dog, the anchor and the house then we have the clover the anchor and the rider and you can tell the anchor is the one that's in the middle this is the main card of the whole um, deck that we're seeing right now the whole spread so all the other cards are surrounding it so you can tell that the anchor is a number one card um, that we really need to emphasize so this may mean when we're looking at these cards spread, it may mean that they do have a friend that will stick with them through tough times, okay? And is still there, even though the times have gotten very tough. And it looks like because they are very comfortable in their home, they do have maybe a stable family life. So maybe the family member that we were talking about may not be very loyal to the family. Maybe they're not living with them at the time. So they, um, again, as they become more comfortable with their lives, they are wanting a change. They want to discover what is out there in the world. Okay, All so right. we're going to get even more information doing the cross, which is the direct influence. It's kind of the main focus of the rating. So we're going to take B, E, H, and D, E, F and look and see what this information to have. Now, a lot of this, we already have the information from um, previously, but it always kind of gives you a different way to look at the information. So whenever we look at the meaning, we're looking at, well, what's the direct influence? Okay, what is the main focus that we're looking at? So let's first look at the tree, the anchor, and the ship. So, of course, right now, though, what the main focus is, this person is very important to feel safe and stable. Because remember, they if it's not, they put that, they isolate themselves, right? They want to explore things in their life and make a difference, you know, changes and discover things that they don't have in their life. Now, whenever you look at the tower, and the anchor and the moon again whenever things start happening this person isolates themselves right they become emotional so what's really important is this person to have stability in their lives okay so this will be the last card pull that we will be getting the information from and this is the diamond and it goes b d h f and b all right, so we're going to get all of this information put together and see what the summary is. And this is what I have come up with. So this person is most energetic when they are alone and they travel alone. And they sometimes they will seek solitude. So, you know, again, if it's really an unstable period in their life, that's exactly what they do. However, explanation, exploration, or changes that leave a deep mark on the psych without a conscious plan. 
So whenever this person starts to explore, um, they are going to change spiritually and it will be something that they will need for the rest of their life, but their emotional health will definitely change and be grounded emotionally. And they are very intuitively, naturally, okay? But the number one thing is they are just seeking, they wanna know what's out there, they want to discover new things, and but they also want a stable life. Sometimes it's difficult to have both. So this person really needs to learn how to balance this so that they can feel stable whenever they're not at home and they're exploring the world. Now let's see how we can take this information and turn it into spirit art. First of all, I wanna talk about what the spirit art is that we're about to talk about. These are orographs. And really, I wanna tell you the history of the orograph. So Harold Sharp in his spirit guide, Shin Shai, developed the orograph. And it was previously known as symbolic art because remember, we're taking a lot of symbols from the information that we had and we're going to put it into an orograph, okay? This is technique was depicting the human art through colors and patterns. During a reading, a psychic reads the client's aura and is able to obtain life events, information, symbols, color, and patterns are utilized to depict this information. So that's what we did through the card spread is we got all, the, all of this information. Now, it, as a psychic reader, you can actually tap into someone's aura, get more information, and that will actually make your reading so much more powerful if you do both. Now, I'm going to show you how to develop an orograph with this information. And as you notice, now the last one is not a circle, but the first two are circles. So most of the orographs are shaped like mandalas. And a mandala comes from the Sanskrit for magical circle. So that's where it's, it's kind of like a wholeness. It's spiritual. It's an expression of self and wholeness. And that's why you see a lot of orographs that are circles, but you don't have to do it because it is spirit art. You can venture out and make it more into any shape that you want to. You can fill up the whole page just like that last example. So what I did is I took all the information from the, the nine card spread that we just talked about and made it into an orograph. And I always like to call it an orograph storyboard because you are talking about the person's life. It becomes a story. And that's what I, why I love Lunderman cards is because they do make a story. So I'm gonna to talk to you about the different symbols that I have on, on this storyboard so that you can understand what all this means. So when we were talking about that this person is ready to explore and change their spirituality, I thought of a butterfly. Because a butterfly is a transitioning at all time and it's almost like, yes, you know, it, in a, um, and when you think of a butterfly, you know, the worm, you got different stages. That's how a person goes through spiritually. And so that's why one reason why I put the butterfly. Now the ship, of course, is discovering new lands, new lands and new things and having more memories. So that's why I had an old fashioned ship there and the island there. So the island means this person loves to isolate themselves. Well, you know, think of an island and you're alone on this island, you are definitely isolated. So whenever it's not real stable, there is the island where this person can go to for, you know, for, um, so solidarity and be by themselves. Now, on, you see the, the uh, woman and the man here where this person has somebody in their life that has been through thick and thin. That's a celebration. So I felt like that needed to kind of look like a celebration and that person is always with them. And of course, we also have a rocket, okay? A rocket going outside the earth to explore more, uh, more explore, you know, it, you don't know what's out there in the universe. Um, and then that purple planet there, well, maybe you may, exp this person may, may find things in their life that they didn't know was possible. And the stars, that is their spirituality. They're going to be reaching for the stars. So see, this is just a wonderful thing to give somebody 
if you date it and you give them the information about the the card spread and then make it into a story this is much more i mean powerful they can keep this they can frame it um, especially if the person isn't an auditory learner and they need that visual this is so much more fun and what I did is I went on Canva and you can do, create this in Canva. You don't have to, you know, feel like you have to be an artist and draw by hand and have pencils, colored pencils, and just make it hours and hours. This took me probably about 10 or 15 minutes where a lot of time if you're drawing by hand, it will take you a good hour or two. So, um, so if you feel like you're not an artist and there, you want to use something else, this is the way to go, all right? And, um, but this is something that you probably wanna do when the person is not sitting with you because it does take some time to think about the symbols and how to make the story. So this is something that you can send to the person later or if you're doing it, you know, when the person's not there, you can send them this plus a video of the spread. Okay, so I showed you how to take the information from the Letterman card reading and put it into an r -graph storyboard so that somebody will have artwork about their, not only about their card spread, but also about their life. And again, it will make your reading so much more powerful and the person will appreciate you so much more for doing the reading. All right, again, my name is Michelle Henderson. Until next time. Love and light.